Welcome to a brand new episode that is kind of segmented from my FPS series, even though we are doing it in this project, just because it's nice and easy, and because it's kind of related to the fact that we are doing Unreal Engine tutorials, and uh, debugging is something that we need to know how to do. So if you didn't see the episode uh, title or the, the, the name of this video, we are going to be doing some general debugging tips. Uh, just because, you know, I get a lot of people who watch my videos and they're not perfect. Like, I, I, I understand my videos are not perfect and sometimes they do have little bugs and tweaks and stuff. And sometimes they're not so little bugs for sure. But I do get a lot of people who watch my videos and you may be, may be among them where you watch my video, uh, everything works fine in the video, other people in the comments say it works, and then you do it and something's clearly not right. Uh, you can't find a variable, you can't, um, like something just is completely broken, like not at all working how it should. Models are switched around or not moving, whatever, you know, so many different things that could be happening, right? And I have obviously had an issue over the past year and a half or more, more of a failing on my part, not an issue, but I haven't been able to help as much as I'd like. I'm not as interactive with the Discord community as I'd like to be or my comment section. So I really, because I, I just don't have, sadly, the time to help out with everyone's bugs, and, and I really appreciate that everyone is... Uh, uh, feels comfortable in reaching out and I do want that because I want to be able to help when I can but uh, obviously if I'm a month late to helping out you've either given up or gotten frustrated or gone on to someone else's tutorials which is fine uh, I'm not losing money here I mean and, and I'm just doing this for fun I'm just doing this to try to help people if they can uh, hopefully understand my gibberish <laughs> so let's kind of break down the process of debugging on your own because the best tool a developer has is Google, absolutely. Um, but also just knowing the tools that you use, knowing Unreal better and knowing little things um, and knowing stupid little buttons, I don't know what this does or I don't, you know, it's stuff like that. It's, it's super useful to understand debugging. So let's hop right into it. I've got this little uh, a collision box over here you can see with some pillars in it. The pillars are purely visual just for me to see. And basically what should happen is when I walk in between these pillars, a fire should ignite. That's how I programmed it. And I tested that this worked. And it doesn't. Because I broke it on purpose. So let's see how I can fix it. So the first thing, we walk through and we get some errors. So what happens if we walk in and out a couple times? I'm just going to walk in and out of this collision box like a couple times. And let's see how many errors we get. I didn't count that. But it looks like I walked in and out about uh, 10 times, or walked into it about 10 times. Because we've got about 5 errors. And that's because it looks like... Let's read this here. I'm going to kind of, first of all, help you guys understand error codes and, and how to debug what they mean and understand what they mean. So, blueprint runtime error. That just means there is an error when you tried to run a blueprint. Blueprint, pardon me. Accessed none trying to read property fire system. Okay, so it accessed none. It clearly didn't access something. Trying to read property fire system. Okay, so first of all, I have a variable in this blueprint here. Let's see, where is it? I've got this blueprint uh, called print box. Basically, uh, something that I just called. And I have a variable in here called fire system. And that's going to be the particle system that makes our fire. So... Let's go back to this error box here and kind of try and read what it says again. Um, uh, developer tools, message log. Okay, let's see. Access none trying to read property fire system. Okay, so now we know that this is a variable. So whenever it says trying to read property, that basically means any variable. A blueprint reference, a character, a uh, a, a bool, you know, the red ones, uh, the a float, an integer, an enum, any kind of variable. Whenever it says trying to read property, it just means it's trying to get data from that. It's just trying to read that property, that variable. So it accessed none. So does that mean there's nothing in it? Yes, that means that it's blank. There's it 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 doesn't contain any information. So blueprint, print box. That is correct. We are trying to use a blueprint called print box. So if you ever click on this print box or whatever it says here, it will actually just take you to that blueprint. So that's really handy. Okay, function, let's see, execute 
Ubergraph print box. Okay, so the Ubergraph is purely just you know any any of the graphs construction script, but it the uh, execute um, Ubergraph print box is the main event graph, which is where you do most of your code. And it is correct. We are having an issue in the event graph, and it even says it right here: graph event graph node activate. Okay, now here's where it gets interesting. We also have one up here called set template. The node, everything, everything on all five of these lines reads the exact same way all the way up into the end where these four say activate, but this first one here says set template. Okay, so I do have a node in here called set template, and I do have a node in here called activate down here at the bottom. So if we click on set template, what's really nice is it will take you straight to the blueprint, straight to the node, and highlight it for you. This is your problem, child. This is what you're having a problem with. Now, it may not be where the problem starts, but this is where the failure happened. Same with activate here. If I click on this, it will highlight it for me. This, is, may, not, this may not be where the problem started. This may not be where I need to fix something, but this lets me know what failed. Okay, this is what did not happen. I wanted this to happen and, and activate, but it didn't. So, how do we fix this? Uh, obviously, and I'm being, I'm being very general here, I want to do more videos of debugging in the future, but these are just some of the most basic errors that you can get. And sometimes, there's tens and hundreds and, and so many errors, you're like, holy cow, this is just happening a ton, and it may be because it's on a tick or something. But right now, there's not too many. So let's kind of, this is pretty bite-sized. So let's take a look at this. Let's see what's happening. Well, first of all, set template is the first thing that we saw that failed in that, uh, in that uh, error log. So how do we know if it actually failed or not, or if it's getting to it? Sometimes, if something's not working, uh, the, the blueprint isn't even getting past to that code. It's not even getting to that node. Well, we know it is getting to this node because it, it, it failed, but well, let's let's just double check that it's actually getting here. So if you want to make sure that something is actually reaching a point, you can add a breakpoint. And a breakpoint will completely stop the game, like pause the game, and show the breakpoint where it happened when it gets triggered. If it never gets triggered, and if, if the execution line never reaches this node, this breakpoint will never trigger, and your game will just keep playing, and you'll, you'll never hit a breakpoint. So let's hit play here. And the breakpoint triggered. So we know we're reaching it, because this is a begin play. So the second we play, this all should be run. So this is successfully being triggered. That's good. Okay, so let's stop the game here. And we still had that error. Access none trying to read property fire system. And it's happening on, on set template again. Well, some of you, of course, maybe have already noticed the issue early on. But we're trying to get the data from fire system. And we're trying to set fire system right here. Okay. But it's not being set by anything. And that's because I just forgot to connect to this. That kind of stuff happens all the time. And that's, that's fine. Okay, so maybe that fixed our issue. Let's just hit play again, and let's see what happens here. Oh, I've still got the breakpoint on. Let me deactivate this breakpoint real quick, and uh, I can just remove this. And let's just hit play again and see what happens. Alrighty. Okay, well, our fire's on. I don't want it to be on till I walk through it. Alright, so if I walk through it, does it stop? No. Okay, the fire's not stopping. Okay, let's stop and see what's happening here. Well, I didn't get any errors. That's good. So, so nothing's explicitly failing. So when this happens and nothing is giving you any errors, but the game is, is still working, that means the programming is doing exactly what you told it to do. But you just may have forgot to, to told it to do tell it to do something, or you may have forgot to connect something properly. Now you guys may have already caught this as well, but if I go through this program, the way particle systems work, and this is a little tangent, is whenever you add a particle system and set the set the data for what the particle system should be, in this case fire, it's going to automatically activate. That's the that's the default. So if you want a particle system to not activate the second you spawn and add it, you want to tell it to deactivate. 
And I do have that here, but, uh, oh, well, I forgot to attach the execution line, so it was never actually reaching it. You know, there's another way you can actually test that. Because see, sometimes this this is a very this is a very short line. I mean, this is just five nodes right here, super super short. But if you look at my other FPS series, or rather the one that this project consists of, and we open something like our character, I mean, there's tons of code. There's lots of nodes, and some of these nodes actually have event graphs and other things that they branch off from, and it's a mess. It, you're like, I I can't always just look at this and see what's disconnected. We're fortunate that we can, and we can see that this was disconnected. But this is another place where a breakpoint would come into place. Because if I, you know, added a added a breakpoint here, pardon me, add a breakpoint. First of all, we'll see it's yellow, and uh, I, I believe those breakpoints will, if it's yellow, that kind of is a signal. I, I can't quite remember what that means. Pardon me. But if we play, of course, it's begin play, so that should have been triggered, but it wasn't. So that's one method. But of course. If you're at the long, far end of a string, and maybe this little disconnect is somewhere in the middle, something I like to do is just put a print string at the end of everything, you know? Because you can put a little print string and say, this has been completed. So we can put a little print string, and since this is begin play, of course, all of this should run, and our print string should run at the very end of it. Well. I hit play and I get no print up top. So obviously I am playing stupid and I know that this is disconnected. I show you guys the fix, but if you go through and you see that the print string is not happening, then you know that it is never reaching that code, right? Because breakpoints can be irritating and you don't always want to have to pause and do a bunch of breakpoints, but sometimes breakpoints are necessary if you need to pause and catch something. So of course, you know, kind of backtracking from the end of your code and reading your code backwards. Okay, print string. Okay, deactivate. Ah, I see, this is disconnected. And, and reading your code backwards and, and honestly, reading your code to someone. I've, I've worked professionally in programming. I don't need more because it's exhausting and I'm, I'm glad I'm not a professional programmer anymore. But I, I would tell my code issues and my errors to my colleagues and I'd be like, oh dude, this is so irritating. I've been working on this all week. Da, da, da. It's supposed to go here, here, and and I facepalm while I'm explaining it to them because as I'm explaining it, I realize it right as I get to the point that's the issue or whatever it may be, and they're probably realizing it too. And I say, hey, hey, uh, thanks for letting me ramble because uh, I just figured it out and I was an idiot. Because if I would have just stopped and looked at every single node and kind of thought about what they're supposed to do and even just reading it out loud to yourself, explaining it to yourself, okay, it's supposed to get begin play, it's supposed to add the particle, okay, and we, we're setting the, the fire system, okay, and we're setting what the fire particle is supposed to be and then we're deactivating it and let's pretend this is disconnected and then we deactivate it, ah, it's not even connected. Same with the first issue, if the fire system, you know, it's pretty easy to just overlook big stuff like that so now we go over and and we play and good our fire system is deactivated so if we walk into it hey it works that's good alrighty well we close it out and we don't get any errors that looks like all of our code works now I do want to add one little caveat here I'm gonna I'm gonna change this up and, and force an error to happen so let's pretend this fire system isn't going to be set on begin play. Let's pretend this fire system has to be set on a very, very specific instance, but of, of like, you know, uh, an achievement is made or something, right? But we want the fire system to go off whenever this overlap happens, nonetheless, because it's going to be in the world the whole time. Well, if, if I disconnect the fire system and this variable's empty, just like our first error was, we would get this activation error, okay? And we go over here, oh, hold on, I'm, and as you can see, we got those errors. We begin play, you know, I go over here, and the fire doesn't happen, okay? Well, we're getting these errors, of course we're getting our set template and our deactivation errors now, since deactivate's connected and being run, we're still getting our activation errors as well. Well, one thing that you can do to 
have code, like maybe this code does other stuff too. And I've, of course, I bring this up in my FPS series. One thing that you can always do to make sure a, a, a variable that has not yet been set does not cause an error is place an is valid. So you can put an is valid down. And if it is valid, then of course the code can run. And if it's not valid, then print string. You can have it say, you can have it say something, and this is good for internal testing. Like you can do this all the way up until your game's finished to launch, and then you can go out and cut all all the print strings out, or however you want to do it. And you say uh, something like, "Fire is not set yet." Okay, so if we hit play, I need to not do it from here. <laughs> I need to do it from here. If we hit play, right, and I walk through, "Fire's not set yet." Oh, okay, so that's what's wrong. Okay, so. Even if our code is working, right, and we're trying to do something and we're wondering why it's not doing it, it is working properly. It just hasn't been accomplished yet in the game or whatever. Now, of course, we're still throwing up errors because this fire system isn't set, but we could apply the same logic here. If we're getting a set template and deactivate which need the fire system to be set, we could say is valid, okay? And we don't want these vari we don't want these functions uh, that use the variable to run until the variable set. So we can make sure that these never run until this variable is safely set, right? Well, I'm sure you get the point. There's many different ways you can debug, and of course, at the end of the day, the code is going to work when it's all set in place. We walk through, and the fire activates. No error codes. No print strings because everything is, is connected and everything looks fine. But of course, there's many different bugs that can happen. There's many different, much more complicated things that can go wrong. And, uh, and in the case of my series, some people do just like jump in in the middle of the series and they don't know that there are variables and, and things that we set up in previous episodes. That's why, at least in the case of my series, it is important to watch every episode because we do things that uh, do affect future episodes. But in any case, when working with other programmers, when working with your own code, making sure stuff is connected, and even making sure stuff is connected in the right order, because this is in, in order, right? So sometimes if you mess with the order of things, that can, that can benefit. And it's always good to experiment. You know, copy, paste, make a backup of what you've done, experiment, and you'll always be able to find something new that someone else hasn't found. But of course, uh, debugging is, is a much more complicated process, and I hope to have more videos about this in the future. I hope this helped you in, in the series that I'm making and will help you in the future. And if you have any specific cases of debugging that you think I can approach or anything that you've got that you think would be a good starting point for an example of, of this series, then uh, please let me know, and hopefully I can use this knowledge for, for greater use for everyone else watching. But thank you very much for watching this tutorial, and if you want to check out a series on how to make a first-person shooter where I show you simple stuff like picking up a gun, shooting and aiming, different fire modes and stuff like that, then please check it out. We're pretty early in the series. We're getting inventory and stuff set up. But other than that, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.